Anne, the first Queen Regnant of Great Britain and Ireland. This video will dive into the history of this queen. Anne was Queen of England, Scotland and Ireland from 1702 until her death in 1714. In 1707, the Acts of Union united England and Scotland as one sovereign state and was named Great Britain, and this act also united Ireland with England. Despite her numerous pregnancies, none of these resulted in surviving children, and as such, Anne was the last monarch of the House of Stuart. Her successor was George I her German second cousin from Hanover. Anne was born on the 6th of February 1665 to James II and 7th and Anne Hyde. Though Anne was one of eight children born to her parents, only Anne and her elder sister Mary survived adulthood. From an early age, Anne suffered from an eye condition known as defluxion which causes excessive watering. She was sent to France for medical assistance and she lived with her grandmother Henrietta Maria of France and then her aunt Henrietta Anne. In 1670 her aunt died and Anne returned to England. In 1671 Anne's mother died. Anne and Mary were raised in a separate home from their father as was the norm at the time and were raised Protestant despite their father being Catholic. In 1671, Anne met Sarah Jennings, later Sarah Churchill, Duchess of Marlborough, and she would have a considerable amount of influence on the Queen. In 1673, James married Mary of Medina, a Catholic princess, not much older than Anne. Anne and her stepmother got on well. In 1677, Mary married William III of Orange. Anne was unable to attend the wedding as she had smallpox. George of Hanover, Anne's second cousin, visited London in 1680 and there were rumours of a potential marriage between them. However, this never happened as the Hanoverians planned for George to marry Sophia Dorothea of Sal. King Charles looked for an eligible Protestant prince as a husband for Anne. The match had to be acceptable to Louis XIV of France, an ally of Charles. The Danish royal family were allies of the French and so a marriage was proposed between Anne and Prince George of Denmark, the younger brother of Christian V. The couple were wed on the 28th of July 1683. Despite it being an arranged marriage, Anne and George were faithful and devoted to each other. Soon after the wedding, Anne became pregnant but the baby was stillborn. Over the next two years, Anne gave birth to two daughters, Mary and Anne Sophia. In 1685, Anne's father ascended the throne as James II and VII. As her father began to weaken the Church of England's power, Anne became estranged from her father and stepmother. In 1687, Anne miscarried. George got smallpox and their two daughters died of smallpox. In 1688, Anne's stepmother gave birth to a son, James. Rumours of the child not being James's or being an adopted child grew rampant. That year, William of Orange invaded England along with his wife Mary, the daughter of James II and VII, and they deposed of King James. Anne was supportive of this action. In January 1689, Mary and William were declared joint monarchs. That same year, Anne gave birth to a son, William. Around this time, Anne and Sarah became closer. In 1692, Sarah's husband was dismissed from his offices after William and Mary suspected him of conspiring with the Jacobites, King James's followers. 
Anne took a stance to support Sarah at a social event and refused to remove her from her household. This caused a rift between Anne and Mary, which never healed. In 1694, Mary died of smallpox and William was left to rule alone. Anne gave birth for the last time in 1700. She had been pregnant 17 times. Only five of her children lived to the age of two, and only one survived past the age of ten. However, none survived adulthood. From 1698, Anne suffered from bouts of gout, causing her immense pain, and she was either carried on a sedan chair or used a wheelchair. She also gained weight as a result of her sedentary lifestyle. William, the sole surviving child of Anne and George, died at the age of 11, in 1700. His death devastated his parents, who would observe a day of mourning every year on his anniversary. As Anne was the sole person left in the line of succession, Parliament enacted the Act of Settlement in 1701 which named Sophia Electress of Hanover and her Protestant descendants as next in line after Anne. Anne became queen on the 8th of March 1702, after William III died. She was very popular with the people and was crowned on the 23rd of April 1702. Anne took a keen interest in affairs of state. Scotland was an independent state and Anne declared that it was necessary for Scotland to be joined with England. In 1707, the Acts of Union declared England and Scotland together as Britain. In 1708, Anne's half-brother James Stuart attempted to land in Scotland with French assistance but was unsuccessful. Anne may have been gay, as her passionate infatuations with two women, Sarah Churchill and Abigail Hill, through her life, have been considered romantic and sexual in nature. In October 1708, George passed away and Anne was overcome by grief. The death of her husband was a turning point in her relationship with Sarah Churchill. Sarah insisted that the Queen leave Kensington Palace for St James's Palace and Sarah removed a portrait of George from the Queen's bedchamber. This infuriated the Queen and she came to resent the Duchess. By 1713 Anne was in poor health. She was unable to walk much and on her son's anniversary in 1714 Anne suffered a stroke. Becoming unable to speak, she passed away two days later on the 1st of August 1714. She was buried beside her husband and children on the 24th of August. Anne's heir, the Elector Sophia, had died two months previous, so George, Elector of Hanover, succeeded as King George I. Many traditional analyses of Anne conclude that she was influenced heavily by her favourites and that she lacked political astuteness. However, much of this is derived from misogyny. Anne's reign marked a noted increase in the influence of Parliament and the decrease in the influence of the Crown. She attended more cabinet meetings than any of her predecessors. The Union of England and Scotland created the largest free trade area in Europe at the time and there was an absence of constitutional conflict between monarch and Parliament, indicating she made wise decisions.